Hey guys, Joe here in the Knight Rider Historian's Workshop. About to reveal another original item that we have in our collection that needs a little repair. So, I don't know if you guys can see this. This says, Kit Scanner. Now, this is not an original scanner from a screen used car. They weren't in a giant box like this. No, what you're looking at is the scanner controller for the Universal Studios display car. Now, for those of you not familiar, this is the car that sat over a pond at Universal Studios theme park and visitors could come in, sit in the car, have a conversation with Kit, ask him questions and whatnot. This uh, box is what controlled the scanner in the, uh, in the car. Now its design is very different from the actual screen used cars. So let's just take a look at it and see um, if we can get it working again and see what it's like. So as we open this up, we'll see that a giant box completely was not necessary for this. Um, some pieces from this have been cannibalized for other projects uh, by actually the person that saved this box from the car before it was gone from the studio. Um, but the important parts are here and most of it's still there. But what's really cool is we have the schematic that explains how it worked. So with this schematic and with the clues left by the pieces here, we should be able to get it working again, I hope. So let's take a closer look. So the first thing you'll notice is this scanner controller was not built from scratch. It was actually built using an off the shelf PCB called back and forth flasher. Now I tried to do some research on this, wasn't able to find anything on the back and forth flasher. So it must be some kind of a, you know, it probably was not very popular, but my guess is this would be some kind of a kit from back in the eighties that um, an enthusiast could build to make, you know, lights go back and forth. And we can see here we've got six ICs and we do have a bar graph here. Interestingly, the, there, you know, there's 10 LEDs on these bar graphs. The last two are blacked out, which is correct, right? Cause Kit only had eight um, bulbs. But if we look at this a little closer, we can see, let's take this insert out here if we can. And there, there's a better look at it. <clears throat> so we can see here some terminal blocks uh, that were missing. And uh, again, one of the pieces, two of the pieces that were scavenged from this for other projects, I'm sure. Um, but the neat thing is we have the outline of what they were right here and right here. So with those two outlines, um, we were able to find the exact replacements right here, cinch, cinch uh, terminal blocks that fit perfectly. So we're gonna be remounting these and we'll get a lot of these connections put back. Again, thanks to our uh, wiring diagram, especially right down here, we can see what goes where. And uh, let's just see if um, this works, and if we can get at least this board powered up and uh, you know, scanning back and forth. And then we'll kind of go from there in future videos. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is let's get, let's move these out of the way. Let's get these two terminal blocks reinstalled for the first time in 30 some years. So in order to do that, um, fortunately inside of this box when we received it was a bunch of hardware, screws, nuts, all kinds of stuff. So using those, um, I think we can figure out exactly what type of screws we need. I'm thinking that they were probably these ones from our collection. You can see our collection over here. These are all the screws and nuts that were found inside the box. So chances are something like this goes here. So let's see, does that fit? see if we have any yeah we've got a little bit of thread down there so let's take one of our yes that fits nicely let's do it over here do another one here let's see if we can get this lined up Oop. lined up for that hole there we go 
get that screwed in place. And we'll tighten those in a minute. Let's grab our other terminal block here. Line that up right about there. Let's see here. I don't know if that screw's long. Nope, that's the wrong screw. Not long enough. Let's try this one. Okay, that one's good. Let's get this screwed on in place here. And finally, let's see if we have one last. Let's see if that one works. See, I know that these are probably the right screws because I only have four of them. So it would make sense that it was these four, right? Right, right. All right, let's tighten this if we can here. Put this on the side. Let's hold, hold the nut and we'll just tighten the screw here. Get it back to where it needs to be. Same with this one. Get that tightened. Let's do the bottoms here. Actually, let's stand the board up. That might be a little easier. Do this one. And do this one. All right, look at that. For the first time in 30 years, terminal blocks, correct style, are back where they need to go. Now this circuit board here, um, we know where it goes, right? There's these two standoffs, and there's two holes there that just happen to line up perfectly, just like that. So let's get that screwed back into place for the first time in decades as well. Now, of course, depending on if this works or not, we may have to take this all apart again. But there's something satisfying about returning something back to the way it was. At least for me it is. Let's get this one screwed in here. There we go. Look at that, it's already looking better. So now I think we can get this board screwed back in. You can see in the box here, there's um, nuts in each corner. So let's get that screwed back in and then see if we can figure out where all these wires go. So we'll lift that up. <coughs> Place it under there. And I'm guessing these are the right screws. There's only three of them, so I think one is missing, but um, let's see if they fit. Do they fit? They, come on. All right, gonna need a little more attention. Come on. You can do it. Get those screwed in. Yes, excellent. There's one. And let's do this bottom corner here. Get that screwed in. Maybe. As I drop screws on the floor. I thought about cleaning off these boards. There's a little bit of dirt and grease on them, but I actually want to leave that for now because as you saw earlier, that dirt and grease helped us identify the uh, correct terminal blocks because of the pattern that was left. So there's other holes here that we're not 100% sure what they are for yet. So I don't necessarily want to um, clean those off because there might be some clues there that will help us determine what originally went there. So let's just get this last screw in here. These buggers are hard to get in. 
Let me loosen these a little. There we go. Let's lift that back up. It's hard to get them started for some reason. There we go. Nope, there we don't go. Third time's a charm, right? Know what they say? Third time's a charm? Nope. Fourth time's a charm, that's what they say. Fourth time. Fourth time is the charm. And if this doesn't work, I'll just throw the whole thing in the trash, right? There we go. Fourth time is the charm. That was close. All right. So now let's take a closer look at this diagram here. So if you'll notice on this board, let me lift it up here. You can see we've got one through six written and then seven, eight down here, which just happens to correspond to one through six, seven and eight. Now that corresponds, to, that's this wire right here. And this is the harness that went out to the actual scanner bar on the car, which unfortunately we don't have. Um, but we did buy the correct male um, plug for right there. So we're gonna build out a replica bar the rest of this way with the harness and the bar and everything. So we have yet to do that, but first we're gonna test this. So what I wanna do here is try to get all of these wires screwed back into these uh, terminal blocks where they go. Now, each one of these wires, thankfully, is numbered. I don't know if you can see, there's seven, eight, uh, six, nine, 10. I'm not sure where there's nine and 10, that doesn't make any sense, but. So we're gonna get these screwed back in to where they go on, this, on these terminal blocks, and then go from there. Um, we can also see right here, we've got um, on this bottom one, 12 volt, negative, positive, and then two to relay. And if we look in here, there's a relay right here. And coming off of that relay is, uh, where is it? Right here. So this is coming off of that relay. And look, we've got a red and a black. And here we've got two relay, two pins on the relay. So that stands to reason that those two probably go right there. So let's get that, let's get that hooked up here and then we'll figure out the rest. See, we've got these other two random wires. These are, our, um, I think these are positive and ground. So um, these are the two that go into these other blocks here. So let's, uh, let's get this situated here. So according to this, we've got ground needs to go right here. So let's get the ground in right there. And positive goes right beside it. So let's get that right in here. Positive. Okay, so we've done, we've got these two in negative, positive. These two to relay, which will be these. So let's open this up. Get these threaded in here if we can. Hopefully you guys find this exciting. Uh, let me know, you know, in the comments, is this something that's interesting to you? Me fumbling my way towards uh, resurrecting, hopefully, uh, a scanner used in the show. I mean, used on the theme park, not in the show. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll do more videos like this. We've got a whole bunch of other electronics that uh, need repaired. And while I'm certainly not an expert, I'm getting better all the time. So let's put this in here like that. All right. 
So I'm sorry my hands were in the way that whole time, but you can see here we've got the two to the relay, the positive and the negative here, and that corresponds to these four. Now, the other ones on this side go to the scanner bar itself. So, that should correspond to these guys right here. Now, we just have to figure out which one is which, because these have 9 and 10 on them, which doesn't make any sense, because there should only be 1 through 8. But these are 7, 8, 9, 5, 6... 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I'm not sure what the deal is with that. And this is all, looks like this is all made out of electrical, like um, extension wire, something you'd have on a table lamp. So this is 7 and 8. So let's see, which one does this correspond to? Maybe we'll just do it this way. So 7 and 8 corresponds to five and six. Okay. I'm not sure why. So let's just for giggles, let's get these in here. We'll go back and double check these later just to make sure that they're all correct. But, um, so those look like they go there. Let's loosen this a little here. We can get this out. Because that's got to go like that. We still have other wires we got to figure out. All right, so let's see what else we have here. So we have seven and eight we've done. This is, this must be one and two. So which one is one and two? loosen this some more so I can figure out what I'm doing. So one and two corresponds to seven and eight. Interesting. So which one is which? Yeah, I think we're going to have to go back and that's one, one, one is seven, one is seven, <laughs> sure, why not, one is seven, get that screwed down, two is eight. What else? Four and five. So four and five is 10 and 11. I'm sorry, that's not four and five. That's gotta be five and six. That's five and six is 10 and 11. So these go here five six And 10 and 11 must go to here. And 11. 
Look at that. So we could continue on, but I think what we need to do now, we still have to figure out certain things like uh, this. It's on the diagram right, right um, here in the corner. So to figure this out, we still have to figure these wires out. We've got a couple um, power wires here we need to figure out. So we still have a little bit of work to do, but let's, let's take a battery to this and let's just see if we can see um, any type of scanner going back and forth on this LED. See if this even still works. So what I'm going to do here, let me get my trusty power supply fired up. We're just going to try five volts. And what I want to do, I'm pretty sure that this wire and this wire, this, the, the ones on the, the chart that say volt voltage, it does say 12 volts. Let's just try five to start and just see what happens. So I'm just going to touch. Oh, I don't know if you can see it. It's going back and forth. Hang on a second. Let's bump this up to 12 volts. Since it says 12 volts. Otherwise, I wouldn't necessarily just do that. But it's telling me it's 12 volts. Which makes sense, right? All right. 12 volts. There we go. Look at that. Hear the relay clicking? And you know what? There's a potentiometer right here. Let's see if we can adjust the speed. Oh yeah, look at that. how slow we can make it. Oh, this, this, this has got a lot of play in it. Yeah, look at that. Let's go faster again. I like it faster. How about that? It actually works. So that is awesome news. Now what we just have to figure out is these wires and also I noticed on the bottom of this board earlier there's a grouping of eight wires that come off of this LED that are cut. So those go out, I don't know if they go directly to here. My guess is there was probably some kind of a, a relay, um, maybe a set of eight relays that went over here that um, then went out to here and out to the power of the scanner bar. I'm not sure, but we do have this one relay. So I'm wondering if this setup only had one relay to fire the 55 watt halogens or if it was a set of eight. So we've got some work to do to figure out, but the great news is this works. Um, so we're in, you know, we're in great shape. We're going to get this thing fully functional again. So Hope you enjoyed me rambling on about this and, you know, getting it put back together. And um, we'll have some more updates on this in the future. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. And now, while we listen to Joe's selection of Knight Rider music that we received directly from Don Peak himself, we'd like to thank these Patreon supporters. Look at you guys scrolling up the screen to my right. Wait a minute. How can you tell which side is my right since you can't see me because I'm not on camera? Oh, well. You know what I mean. We are featuring these fine supporters at our Knight Rider Prop Restorer level. Thank you very much for your support. And for those of you at the Knight Rider History Hunter level, we're recognizing you right now in the description. Now, if you enjoyed seeing this golden nugget of Knight Rider history being rescued from obscurity, then please consider supporting us on Patreon. Your support would empower us to bring you even more of these historical nuggets we are the Knight Rider Historians. Till next time, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.